little puzzles and pieces, it's Jamie from Surrey. My glasses are already steaming up and I can't even stop to do So hello again Puzzles and Pieces, it's Jamie from Multiplicity and me, a channel dedicated to ending the stigma of DID. And today's focus is all about system responsibility. So what exactly is system responsibility in regards to dissociative identity disorder? Quite simply, it's ensuring that each part of us holds accountability for all of us. Because of course, all parts of us are connected. Fundamentally, if we go back to the theory of structural dissociation, which is a theory that states we are all born with separate states of identity, and that DID is a failure to integrate these segregated senses of self by the time our personality matures, it means that no matter how different each of us alters may feel, we are still fundamentally connected at the root of what essentially makes us us. Oh my gosh, these glasses! <coughs> okay, back to it. This is why the it wasn't me, it was my alter excuse just doesn't wash, it's utter rubbish. No matter how distant that part of you may feel from you, you are still obligated to take responsibility for what that part of your being did. Because that part is still a part of you, whether you feel it or not. And if you're struggling to stop these parts acting out, this is why it's absolutely fundamental to make sure that you get some support from a mental health professional or someone else that can help you. Communication and cooperation is also vitally important within the system to make the system work like clockwork. Regardless of what happened, all parts are accountable. As cruddy as that may feel, and really I do understand how cruddy that feels, we must ultimately take responsibility for the root of our personality's actions, of our identity's actions, whatever it may be, we are fundamentally still responsible because that part is still a part of the overall us. So let me use an example because I, I tend to find whenever somebody throws the our DID is just a scapegoat to get out of jail or whatever, they tend to use Billy Milligan. Now, if you don't know Billy Milligan, Billy Milligan essentially was a man who committed some horrendous attacks on women. The criminal justice system still detained Billy as a whole, even though his alter committed those offenses against those women. Why? Because his alter did that crime, and ultimately, the ability to do such a thing is at Billy's core. If you did the crime, you do the time, and the same goes for any issue you may face as a system. So this was the first case to ever be used as an insanity plea for DID. It wasn't me, it was my alter. Please don't send me to jail. And although he did not go to prison, he did end up in a mental health institution where he was able to receive that much needed support for clearly a system that he wasn't managing very well. I think since this case, a lot of people have built up this idea that you can just throw, it was another personality that did it, out into the wayside and that will get accepted. But actually, that is very wrong. An insanity defence is raised in less than 1% of cases and only a fraction of those are successful. I'll give you some random examples that I was able to find. So State versus Grimley 1982, the defence of not guilty by reason of insanity was used due to multiple personalities in a drink driving case. The court ruled that it is immaterial of what state of consciousness or personality the defendant was, as long as the personality was controlling the behaviour, was conscious and aware of their actions, therefore they are still all accountable. The court basically said it didn't matter what state of personality he was in or what state of consciousness he was in, if that part, if that alter is aware, is conscious and is able to distinguish right from wrong, they are ultimately still at fault. The bottom line of that is multiple personalities do not preclude criminal responsibility or even abscond you from any responsibility. Alternate personalities cannot be used as an excuse to not be able to establish right from wrong because ultimately, as a whole, you all know right from wrong. Bottom line is, DID cannot be used as a scapegoat. And Billy was pretty much the first and one of the only cases. If you go back to my video on evil, scary persecutors, which are often used as a poor punchline for horror films, it's essentially no such thing as an evil personality unless at the root of that system, evilness already exists. And obviously we're aware of parts that may reflect the behaviour seen from other abusers, and that can be very scary. Sometimes that's a bit of a smokescreen to kind of replay and internalise that abuse. That doesn't necessarily mean that part would action that outwards, because we understand it's one thing to self-harm 
it's another thing to harm others. Because at the end of the day, even if we feel that we have evil or bad parts, we are who we are due to the experiences that go on around us. But that still does not negate any responsibility for our overall actions in any case. And I think actually that's a very hard pill to swallow. I remember when we were first told that we essentially weren't as separate as we felt. You know, that was extremely alien and it didn't feel nice in any which way. I think part of DID is very much, right, that's a you thing, this is a me thing, this is how we keep ourselves safe, we're all separate. That happened to you, but it didn't happen to me. So we'll be very separate from one another and, you know, you'll never be able to tell. But ultimately that's, that's what this disorder wants you to do. It wants you to remain separate and know that that was that bit and then this was you and that was me. It wants you to do that. That's the whole point of it. This allows us to live in the paradox of uh, I went through abuse and ultimately I did not experience abuse. We are then able to carry on and live a life without abuse and trauma at the forefront. The less connotated with each other that we are, the further that we can escape that factor. But at the root of it all, we are all collectively one whole person. So if an alter acts in a poor or reprehensible manner, or does something to embarrass the system, it's certainly not a nice realisation that a part of you as a whole did that. But we have to own it and we have to accept that fact. And to be honest, I feel that since we've understood and accepted that, we have had less of an issue as a system. We now all keep each other in mind as much as possible before taking action. And that has made the world a difference to our stability. I know I'm harping on here, but I think this is, I, I don't know, I feel like this is quite a complex issue to get your head around, so apologies, I keep waffling. Hopefully this will be my last paragraph. To put it into perspective, we collectively would already have to have that ability to be able to partake in that behavior. Even if we feel as separate alters, we couldn't possibly do such a thing, but action belongs to all of us. And therefore we must take accountability and responsibility for every part's actions. Regardless of how high or how low the amnesic barriers are between parts, that does not change the fact at the root of it all, we are all part of the same whole. Okay, so to kind of wrap up, I'm going to generate some tough love. So I apologize if this is a little too straight to the point, but I just want to try and make it clean and simple as possible. We've had so many questions about this sort of thing over the years. I felt it best to just dish it out now without the sugar coat. And of course, feel free to completely ignore our advice. You are well within your rights to do so. Oh no, but Jamie, I really wouldn't have done something like that. So why should I have to apologize? Well, tough. While I truly do understand how much that sucks, it does not negate your responsibility as a whole being. If an alter did that, it means you collectively are capable of doing that same action. You did it. You did that action collectively and now you have to take responsibility. But what if that part won't apologise? Well then you have to do it on their behalf and apologise again collectively. I would also simultaneously explain the importance of system responsibility to that part. This disorder is no excuse for a scapegoat and I think if that behaviour is allowed to continue and if you kind of live with those blinkers on that it wasn't me, it was Patricia, you are essentially becoming a meme in that and you're allowing the scapegoat stigma to continue when that's not the case at all. If you're scared about an action that your alter has done or may do, then you must seek professional support and help. Safeguard yourselves now and work through that and hopefully it will boil down to something that's all bark and no bite. What about if you're someone who hasn't got DID but you've been affected by the actions of someone who has? I should have done that cap like right at the beginning actually. That would have been better for a voiceover. First of all, I would say from an outsider's perspective, are they aware that system responsibility is a thing and does exist? I can understand putting our heads in the sand and just saying, no, that wasn't anything to do with me. Please don't expect an apology from me. But that's the wrong kind of perspective to have. It keeps us safe from, I guess, looking inwards at RDID and being introspective, but it doesn't keep us responsible. If someone in the system isn't aware that system responsibility is a thing, it may be best to remind them that each alter's actions represent the entire system, whether they like it or not. But please obviously be a little bit gentle about this, give them some time to process and digest this information. If they do not wish to hear this or they want to perpetuate this belief because their alter did it and they didn't, to me that's a red flag in a friendship. I think any kind of relationship really. And I will be clear on your boundaries going forward, i.e. you know, I can look 
go another way this time but if this happens again you know that's going to put our relationship in trouble whatever you feel comfortable explaining but make sure to set some healthy boundaries in my personal opinion healthy boundaries should always be encouraged in any kind of relationship so our summary is as follows DID is not a scapegoat stereotype the media skews the reality of using DID as a get out of jail free card when in fact it's incredibly rare system responsibility does and should exist all system members are responsible for the actions of one another as we are part of the same overall whole that is a tough pill to swallow even for us to this day but I think that's a particularly larger pill to swallow at the beginning of your journey if you are new to discovering or accepting that you have parts and that's okay it you're allowed time to process this information and finally healthy boundaries are very important whether it's between alters and inside the system alters and external friends or people in general I would always encourage healthy boundaries and remember don't be afraid to take accountability responsibility and apologize when necessary whilst of course we need to remain empathic that of course we have a mental health condition and no one is expecting us to be perfect we still owe it to others to recognize when we have messed up mental health is not an excuse for avoiding accountability altogether and that is another puzzle piece together please remember to seek the support of a professional wherever necessary and ensure to end your day with a little self-care if you feel like it <laughs> that's it now thank you guys bye apologies there's grass cutters outside i've had to shut the windows and i'm baking so I'm going to be very warm very quickly. Oh, hang on, I should um, clap, shouldn't I? <coughs> oh, Corona. Not really.